you know, a year before I'd been a stockbroker in London where people don't look you in the eye, they walk past you all day, everyone's got their head down, playing Monopoly basically. So I'd got restless with that and thought there had to be more to life than that. So I was just on, on a search for that deeper meaning and um, it was a special time for me, 1973. I'd already fallen in love with the hippies. So when I quit the stockbroking with a mate, we bought this old police van in London and drove overland all around Europe, then turned right in Istanbul, then went around Turkey, went all around Israel, and then came across Iraq and into the bottom of Tehran. It was then in, in Iran. And in the caravan park there, there was a magic bus full of hippies, and I knew, you know, this is my... I don't know why. I don't understand that. But, you know, I, I kind of thought, this is my mob. So then I spent that summer really in India and then over the next 10 or 15 years was my a big search for Godo. I wanted to know what was going on, you know. Was it just dog eat dog or was there a bigger thing going on? So various trips and a big mushroom trip in Bali sorted me right out. So eventually I've come back to Australia 15 years later and had a child with Louise in Melbourne and headed off looking for like-minded people, community. And I'd regularly visited Nimbin in between trips to India and just looking for like-minded people, always dreaming of a community of people who kind of saw it like I do. And when I eventually came up here and, and settled in Nimbin mid-80s, I came to the 83, 10 years after festival. I think I came to the 1978, five years after Aquarius Festival. So I'd kept this link with Nimbin, but I wasn't ready to settle down and do the hard yakka of building houses and making gardens, which I saw people doing. I kept going off to India to try to work out what was going on. So I eventually get to Nimbin and had a restless relationship. So I rented the shop from Tom and Molly straight away next to Rainbow Lane and went to the, borrowed a thousand bucks off a mate and went to the tip mostly and put a heap of secondhand junk in there and I'd long decided I didn't, I, I wouldn't want to work for anything I didn't want to do much anymore. So, you know, I did that museum and bought a share or borrowed the money and bought a share on a community, Sphinx Rock in the Tweed Valley and settled into a Nimbin life which then was, you know, it was a really bad dirt road. We didn't get many visitors at all. Anyway, the junk shop did well. Hippies have great taste. So I've slowly got to know the community. And several things happened then. I, I'd always loved weed. You know, I was an old migraine sufferer, boarding school casualty, and weed was great medicine for me. But I hadn't really put the two and two together. It stopped me getting, getting migraines. It stopped a lot of anxiety, I reckon, wounded child stuff. So in Nimbin, I learned from Bob Hopkins largely, you know, the origins of prohibition. I've been busy trying to work out who I was and really that changed me a lot because in the, in, in the second hand shop, the museum, I had dealers, the street dealers, which were mostly heroin addicts then, hiding in the back, doing deals with tourists all the time, blah, 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 you know. And they taught me really what was going on as much as anything. So then, then, you know, the visitors to Nimbin, which, you know, were coming through regularly because of the murals especially. And Nimbin looked like any other country town except for the murals on all the buildings and the long-haired hippies hanging around in the street a bit. So people would ask how it's going, blah, 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 blah and... So with friends, when I quit the, the second hand dealing and, and I kind of my relationship fell apart after seven years or so, I thought with mates I'd had this nagging idea, let's make a museum to show people the hippie journey and what happened here and what hippie philosophy and hippie thinking is like. So we made this history of this piece of land where we are, which, you know, from the creation dreaming to the local Aboriginal mob, the pioneers arrive, and then the hippies come. So that's when I really started learning more and more, delving into archives about the Aquarius Festival and what a scene it was. 
And Graham Dunstan's been a regular visitor, staying at my place over the last 30, 40 years. So he, of course, you know, I've always, I've always liked the history bit anyway, so I've questioned him a lot. I mean, there's some things about Aquarius that aren't generally talked about, like there were no formal meetings to organise it. This was serious dreaming life time, you know. People were right out there before every meeting which had no agenda and no committee, they'd all smoke a big joint and pass it around in a circle. Mushrooms were being taken lots by lots of the people there. And, you know, that was unusual in May to get mushrooms. So, you know, there was a lot, there was this spiritual awakening going on which made it, I imagine, with a lot of people together, a really strong experience. And this is mind-altering stuff. This, this is why I've been so passionate about drug law reform because the spiritual plants that people used to use to experience God, if you like, and have deep insight into the creation have all been made illegal. And, and for that reason, you know, we don't want people finding out too much perhaps. People, the system just wants you to keep your head down and keep working. I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but generally the system's made to keep everyone highly employed and we don't want one washing machine here. We want the whole street to have one because that keeps capitalism working, you know. And, and consumerism is what's eating the planet. So, yeah, my 40-odd years in Nimbin has been a, a, a waking, a slow maturing of wisdom journey for me because I think back then in the 70s then when we did have our trips and did have great insight and did see that this society is headed for the wall, headed for disaster, you know, we're trashing the place, we're mean to each other, the whole system of competing with each other is not good for our happiness or the planet's happiness and that's all related, they're all one thing in the end. So the hippie effort of living together, not making money a priority, doing all, all the values that Aquarius espoused were the same as I always had and felt and the same a lot of our generation had, I think. So my enthusiasm for the Aquarius 50 thing comes out of, I suppose, my respect for the effort that Nimbin's put in because places like, I love Tuntable. You know, it is a total mixed bag of people living there, all sorts of people. They work it out. They still have a big tribal meeting. They bought several farms now adjoining. They built a fantastic hall. They've got a terrific school, probably the best school in the area. They've got a shop. They've got a board. They've got, you know, I I really admire their effort. The community I live on, it's only a dozen shares. It's a much different setup. I think there's, you know, more than 50 communities around, all with different setups. Anyway, it's an effort at doing something differently because we know the current system, it, it, it's not a recipe for happiness and that's got to be, you know, the purpose of life. You got to be... If you're enjoying it, you don't question the purpose. It's self-evident. So that's the one to go for. And Nimbin's effort at doing that, swimming against the tide, has been fantastic, I reckon. And, you know, really the vision was born out of that time in the early 70s when everyone was waking up to a different spirituality. I mean, it is, in the end, it's spiritual for me, the whole gig, you know, and pretty much before then, most people were going to church. The whole thing has changed in 50 years and Aquarius as a marker, that Newman Festival in 1973 was a real marker of change and an important moment and it set the tone for Newman's idealism, I think, which suited me and a lot of the North Coast. So... You know, I love that Nimbin's kept flying the flag for freedom, really, flag for freedom and justice. And it's now turned into a bit of an outdoor hospital, you know. All us misfits who don't like society and don't quite know where to fit in, we found a home here in our own little black sheep farm. So very tight community, family really, and a lot of us lost our family. I think, I'm, I mean, I lost mine going to boarding school. My story is incomparable to other people who 
had bad family lives and lots of orphans, lots of kids. So, you know, there's a reason why people love cannabis and it is a medicine, helps you cope and work your way through it. So that tolerance Nimbin had for that brought more and more people here. And who we've got now after 50 years is this collective of relatively enlightened people who are very creative and very compassionate and it's a special mob. So 50 years on, it's worth a birthday party.